Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna be doing something that I'm super excited about. I've been wanting to do uh, this for a really long time and I finally, I guess, got the uh, cojones to just go ahead and give it a try. We're gonna cure some bacon together. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna turn the camera around and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing prepped up and prepared and make the brine and the cure for it and then we'll go ahead and uh, get that done. Here we go. All right guys, so first off, let's start with the pork belly. This is a, where is it at? Five and just a little over five pound piece of pork belly that I got at Wegmans. It was $17.97. I'm sure you could find this cheaper anywhere else that you go. But basically this whole recipe is based on a five pound pork belly. It's going to be a little bit less because I might trim off a little bit of this, a little bit of this fat up at the top here, the skin. And then, so basically you can figure about five pounds. So what I'll do is in the description below, I'll put all of these ingredients and I'll put the quantities that we used in this. And you can kind of figure up what your recipe would be based off of this. So for instance, if you only use a three pound pork belly, take all of my measurements, divide it by five, and then multiply it by three. And what that'll do is that'll give you all of your ingredients that you need for a three pound. Let me go ahead and get this cleaned up and then we'll be right back. All right guys, so we are back and you could see, I went ahead and got this cleaned up. I rinsed it off a little bit. You could see all these little ridges. This is the outer skin of the piggy and I, I honestly don't want this on there. So I'm gonna trim this off. I think my knife is gonna be sharp enough. Hopefully, I went ahead and sharpened this knife up. Hopefully we can shave off a little bit of this outer skin. Not sure. Yeah, I guess it's working pretty good. I don't wanna do too much. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let's do some uh, cleaning up of this dude right here. guys so here we go this is the trimmed up pork belly I took off maybe I don't know it's a good maybe a half a pound of fat skin uh, right here so this is going right in the trash my dogs kind of think that they're getting it but they're not you can see my hands are all greasy where this is just kind of like melting on my hands and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with that I think that's gonna be pretty good all right when we come back let's go ahead and do this we're gonna go ahead and get this brine all together let me get rid of this and wash my hands okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and use this bowl to mix up our curing brine with and then I also I went to IGA my local IGA and I found these two gallon Ziploc bags look at this two gallon size there's six bags in here and I only paid a dollar for this box you can order them on Amazon uh, what I'll do is maybe I'll put a link in the description also to the two and a half gallon Ziploc bags. They're like $3.50 if you were looking for some gi giant bags. And then the other thing I'll put a link in the description below is this pink curing salt number one. I I've read a lot of stuff on here and people say you don't have to use this. I guess if you're going to consume this bacon fairly quickly and keep it refrigerated, which I'm going to probably do anyways, but I still wanted to use the cure because what this does is this keeps the nice pink color uh, to your bacon. So I'll put a description below for this pink curing salt. Use very minimal amount of curing salt per pound of meat. Basically a quarter of a teaspoon per pound of meat. So you don't use a whole lot of this. All right, so what we're gonna do is let's get all of the dry ingredients in here. We'll start off with uh, black pepper. We're gonna use about a tablespoon and everything's leveled off. One tablespoon right there and then two thirds of a tablespoon. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we'll say that's two thirds. All right, half a cup of brown sugar. Dang, that was pretty good right there. Half a cup of brown sugar, boom. Let's do kosher salt. You can use pink Himalayan sea salt as well, uh, but I like using this. Half a cup of salt. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is the pink curing salt. This is gonna be by the quarter teaspoon, which I have right here. Everything is level, so we're gonna go, we need five of these. One and a quarter teaspoon. I do have a teaspoon over here, but we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and five 
would be one and a quarter teaspoons of the curing salt. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our wet ingredients, a half a cup of maple syrup. All right, so we're gonna do a half a cup of this. Let's add that in there, okay. We're gonna do one cup of water. It's actually, my measurements come up for just under a cup, but I'm gonna add like literally just under one cup, okay. And the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna do the bourbon. I did Maker's Mark. This little dude cost about four bucks for this little bottle. I'm gonna put the whole thing in here. Boom, let's give this a good mixing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let this sit. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm just gonna let it sit here for five minutes. Uh, when we come back, I'll give it another mixing and then we'll go ahead and add this to the uh, bags and we'll be done with part one. Okay, so I let this sit for, like I said, about four or five minutes and I just kind of remixed it up. So let's go ahead and kick this off to the side. Let's bring back uh, the star of the show right here. We're gonna get two of these bags. I already got one. And this one, we're gonna do a second bag because we're gonna double bag it. And we're gonna fold it over like this. Fold over the Ziploc bag again, like that. And then that way, we can kind of just pick this dude up like this. Okay, get him all the way in there. And then start unwrapping the bag like that. Perfect. All right, give it one more good stir and then we're gonna start pouring it in. Ooh, almost overflowed. And actually everything kind of broke down pretty good. There we go. Okay. And zip it up. All right, we're gonna take this Ziploc bag, open it up, unfold it like that, and then we're gonna start working him in this bag that and we're good to go. I think I'm going to use this pan here, flip it over. We are good to go. All right, guys. So I got my bacon all made up. I think it's going to turn out amazing. I tried that brine. It is hands down very tasty. So we're going to let it sit right here for one week. All right, guys. See you in a week. Bye. What is going on, guys? So it has been one week and we are ready to open up this refrigerator and take this bacon out. It's gonna be amazing, here we go. Oh my gosh. Here we go, we got it right here. This is the marinated pork belly, and what I've done is probably once a day, sometimes even twice a day, I gave it a good flip and just kind of, you know, gave it a little pat. It's definitely a little bit more firm than what it was when we started. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around. Uh, I think it's got some nice coloring to it. Again, this is my first time, so I'm kind of excited to see what happens. Uh, let's go ahead and take this out of the bag. We're gonna go ahead and set it on this tray and check it out, see what it looks like, yeah. I think these Ziploc bags, for being really inexpensive, held up really well. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this over to the sink real quick and get this drained off. We're gonna drain off all this ex excess fluid in the bag. I'll be right back. Okay. There it is, our bacon pork belly that has been cured. And we're gonna do the slicing, obviously this direction, because there is the grain. We're gonna go this way. I'm gonna go with the grain and make that bacon. But uh, first thing we need to do is we need to get this rinsed off and get all this excess salt. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to the smoker uh, let's go ahead and move over to the sink and get this cleaned up. All right. We're just going to take this and just rinse off because otherwise it's going to be way too salty. We don't want that. Just there. And you can see how nice and firm this is. So yeah, this is going to be really good. All right, so we got it all cleaned off. Now we're gonna pat this dry and let it sit for a little bit. That way um, it'll get a little bit tacky 
And then that way when we throw it in the smoker, that smoke will have something to adhere to. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, so this is my smoking rack right here for my smoker, but uh, my smoker racks are pretty nasty. So I ended up finding this little tray right here. We'll transfer this pork belly right onto that dude right there. All right, we're gonna take some paper towel and just kind of blot this dude dry. I don't want it to be wet or anything like that going into the smoker. So we're gonna get him blotted up. Look at that, soaking up some of that excess water. One more turn, we'll get this all blotted up. Get that just perfect. I'm gonna transfer this back to the refrigerator for about, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. And we'll let that kind of just get that nice. You can actually already see it has a little tackiness to it. And that's gonna be just what we want. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put this right into the refrigerator, get this nice and cool for about 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna go right to the smoker. So let's go ahead and get that smoker set up. So we went ahead and we got this pork belly bacon out of the smoker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and put this into the freezer for probably about 30 minutes. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna firm it up and it's gonna allow me to use this right here. I have this Harbor Freight Tool Slicer. I got this a few years ago. Actually, I got this when we were living in Florida. So it's probably been around six or seven years and it works perfect. You just take your thumb on this button and right here, there's a trigger. You have to have them both on at the same time. So safety button goes first. Then with this right here, there's a little gauge and you can see that actually moves the depth back and forth. And then that way I can get some even cuts. Not talking, let's go ahead and get it into the freezer and then we'll come back and then we'll go ahead and start slicing this up. And then we're actually gonna fry some up at the same time. So this is gonna be about as fresh as it gets. We're gonna slice it, fry it, taste it, and then we will be done. All right, here we go. So I went ahead and got this out of the freezer. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and get this thing sliced up and get it fried up and give it a try. Here we go. All right, so there's our bacon. Nice, thick, thick cut pieces of bacon. Check that out. Oh man, look at that pretty, pretty color. I think this is gonna work out really well and cook up super, super good. I might make it a little bit thinner. I think I'm gonna make it just a hair thinner. Not too much, but uh, other than that, yeah, I think we're gonna be good. So let's go ahead, set the dial back just a little bit. There we go. Just like that. All right, let's go ahead and see how that does.
All right, everybody, so the bacon is done. It is cut. Um, I was only able to get probably about two, maybe a third of the way cut with the slicer because it started to get really soft, so I put it back in the freezer. But what I was able to cut, check that out. Look at that beautiful pink color. I think that curing salt really did a great job. I can smell that little bourbon in it. I can get the hints of maple, believe it or not, this is crazy, and I get smoke. So all three of them, this is gonna be really good. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna do the final test. We are gonna fry this up and we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna have everybody come down. I'm gonna have my kids come down. I'm gonna have Heather come down. We're gonna give this a try. I'm gonna try uh, cooking up about five or six pieces on the skillet inside. So let's go ahead and get that done. And then that'll be the final thing. We'll go ahead and try out this bacon. I know this was probably a long video, but it was really fun to do. It was really fun to make this, but just a fun project to do at home. So let's go ahead and get these things cooked up and then we shall have everybody try it and go from there. So here we go. So we have got it. I've got the whole family here. We're all in one shot, which is a very rare thing. Check it out. What do you think? Looks good. Does it look good? Mm -hmm. Smell it. You smell like bacon? Yeah. All right, so pick your pick your piece. You're going for the extra. Mom went for the extra. Pick your piece, and they're all pretty, pretty equal. We got one piece left. I think what we'll do is we'll let the pups have it. But check it out. Before you try it, don't, not yet. There it is. All right guys, so most of the time, like I said, you get people where they show you how to make it, but they never really try it themselves. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. All right, here we go. What do you think? It's really good. It's really good. good. Mm-hmm. Thick bacon. bacon. I did real, I did thick cut. I think it's a little a little salty. Not terrible though. It has like a smoky flavor. You get that little bit of like a like a smokiness. Mm -hmm. I mean, really this is really good. This is really good. You like it? Mm -hmm. Is it a winner? Mm-hmm. That's it. Alright, that's it. That's it. That's the video. We're done. All that work, a week's worth of work, right there. It is different than what you would get at the store. Yeah, it's a, it, it is different. It's some. It's not exactly like something that you would purchase from the store, like that typical. This has more of a natural smokiness. I don't want to say beef jerky flavor. It's because it's not, but you could taste the different flavors. I put maple in it. Mm -hmm. I put bourbon in it. I don't know if you get that little bit of a bourbony taste, mm -hmm. but that's it. There it is. That's good. That's really good. All right, everybody, that is it. That is the video of the day. Make sure you go down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Give this video a like and a thumbs up. Put a uh, comment below. I reply back to all my comments. And yeah, I think we got another couple. Uh, <laughs> we got some more experiments coming on, some more kitchen trials or whatever you want to say. 
Yeah? <laughs> you like it? All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. See you later. Till next time, stay awesome. <laughs> stay awesome, everybody. Bye. Bacon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no